God protected his word. Ten commandments are ten commandments. Jesus is who he is, claimed from the Old Testament as well. There is no claims for Islam in the Quran. The only claims is the punishments that the Muslim world will get in the ends of times. As written in the books of Ezekiel 28, 29, 30, 31, Isaiah chapters 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Read them. Lebanon will be destroyed by the mighty one. That is very clear in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 19, the Lord will come on a swift cloud to fight Egypt. Isaiah 19, Muslim country. The Lord will come down, it says. He will come down personally. Habakkuk chapter 3, he will fight Midian, an Arab country. Isaiah 63, he will come out of Edom, the Arab Muslim world, with his garments sprinkled with blood. When Jesus comes to fight, he will come to fight the Muslims. Jesus is not a Muslim. Jesus is a Jew. The message of Christ has been predicted thousands of years ago. And all of a sudden when Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, produced a message that is contrary to that message. And the Bible warned us that there will be many false Christs amongst you. But God will bring out a remnant from these people. God will bring a remnant, come out of her my people. And he will bring those remnant. And the remnant that will come out of Islam, he promises, we will be with him forever. We will reign with him from Jerusalem, not from Mecca. Jerusalem is the holy place. Mecca was never a holy place in the Bible. Abraham never built the Kaaba. Abraham lived in Israel. If you want to know what David Daoud said, then read his book, the Psalms. If you want to know what Zechariah said, read his book in the book of Zechariah. And in chapters 12 and 14 of the book of Zechariah, it warns the Muslims, I will make Jerusalem a trembling cup to all surrounding nations. The houses will be rifled and the women ravished. In other words, yes, the Muslims will partially take over Jerusalem. And the Bible says, and the feeble amongst Judah will fight like King David. They will fight these enemies and God will be victorious and Jesus will stand on the Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives. It's very clear. His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. God will fight. And when His feet stands on the Mount of Olives, there will be an earthquake. He will come to fight these armies that comes against Jerusalem. In other words, the source behind the Quran and the source behind the message of Muhammad was very satanic. It's not from God. Satan always tries to appear, makes himself to be God. You must examine the evidence. You must ask yourself, is killing people from God or is it from the devil? The devil hates humanity. God loves humanity. God wants to preserve our lives. And Jesus said, whoever seeks to lose his life will save it. And whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Losing our lives as Christians is not by blowing ourselves up. Losing our lives as Christians is as Jesus told us, I will send you a sheep amongst wolves. In other words, we are but sheep for the slaughter. We are a persecuted people. You want to find the truth? Go find where there is persecution. You will find the Christians being persecuted by who? by the Muslims. If Islam is the truth, then why does Islam persecute us? If we are the persecutor, then we are lying. But we're being killed day and night. That's what the Bible even predicts. Crying out every day. And the martyrs in heaven will cry out too. For how long, O Lord? These martyrs, the Bible says, they were beheaded in the name of Jesus. There's no other people that want to behead people, except in the Muslim world. Wake up, my Muslim friend. God will save one-sixth of these armies that comes against Jerusalem. Be part of those people that God will save and restore. Try it. You will be filled with joy, long-suffering, everlasting life. And if you die, you simply transfer to true martyrdom, to be with Christ forever.
I pray for my family all the time. Most people think that when you become a Christian and you from a Muslim background that you hate your family. In fact, it's the opposite. The family hates us. This is why every Muslim should ask, why are we hated by our own family? Yet we still love our family because the Bible says, love your enemies, do good to those who do evil to you. So we love our family and we pray for them continuously that they read the Bible. The Quran is not the truth, the Bible is. You, you cannot find the truth unless you go to the Bible and read what the Bible says. So I always pray for my family to read the Bible. <clears throat> I always pray that they pray in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The God, the only one God, the true God, to pray in His name to seek the truth. And Jesus said, and this is what I pray for them all the time, that they seek with all their soul, their heart, their mind, their might, if you seek God with all your might, with everything you got, trust me, you will find Him. As a matter of fact, He will find you. The Bible is the road map. God has one road map and the devil has another road map. The devil's road map is the wide gate in which he invents cults, religions, isms, and God has a narrow gate in which he tells us to detail what's going to happen in the future. I mean, it's amazing. How much evidence do we need to establish a case? I think the prophetic evidence in the Bible is overwhelming. I can spend a lifetime just talking about the prophetic evidence in the Bible. Yet, when I look at the Quran, I don't find hardly anything. What, that the Persians and the Romans will have a war? and Rome lost and in the end they will win? That's no major prophecy. This is one of the prophecies in the Quran. That's like a soccer team playing a match. One of them is going to be the winner. What other prophecies is there in the Quran? Well, the Hadith has several prophecies in the Hadith. But those prophecies are the antithesis of what's in the Bible. These prophecies have been taken from the Bible, convoluted, in order to destroy the Muslim. Loving the Muslim is to tell them the truth. Loving the Muslim is to tell them their destiny. If I'm going to go to hell, and you had the truth, and you didn't tell me that truth, and I ended up going to hell for the rest of eternity, I'm going to be cursing you for the rest of eternity for not telling me the truth. Telling the Muslim the truth is something that is an obligation for us as Christians. We don't hate the Muslims. To love the Muslims is to bring them out from eternal damnation. This is why the Muslims think that our message is a hate message and it's not, it's a love message. We don't hate the Muslims. If I'm going to fall into a pit, I want you to stop me. Because if I fall into a pit and die, what use are you as a friend? I am your friend because I love you, because I want you to receive eternal salvation with Christ. You know, Muslims might ask the question, you know, can you be right and 1.3 billion Muslims wrong? That's the question Muslims ask me. Wait a minute, you're telling us you're right and 1.3 billion Muslims are wrong. If you believe the story of Abraham, Noah, Jesus, Moses, pick any one of them. It usually is the case. One person is right and the whole world is wrong. Noah was right and the whole world drowned. Moses was right. Abraham was right. Jesus was right. The patriarchs of the Bible were right. Zechariah was right. One man is right, and usually the majority are wrong. The truth is not held in democratic elections. Democracy and truth are two contrary things. Truth is truth. One man can be right, and the whole world can be wrong. The converts from Islam are right, and the majority of the Muslims are entering into the wide gate. They need to switch to the narrow gate. 
I know many of you won't believe it because you probably ported the wide gate. But if you choose the narrow gate, that's salvation.